Welcome to stage four of Hard as Hell 2 Gun 2018. This is a mixture stage of rifle and pistol. Here's the stage description. You start at this table, up range of it, your rifle will be on the table. There's a rope there that's an activator. Activate the rope, jump on the table and from the red area engage the red targets. Then you move forward, jump down onto this blue plank and engage the blue targets from the blue plank. Then you go down here, engage another activated target and engage the yellow targets through the yellow port. Abandon the rifle, crawl through the drain hole. Then, as you crawl through the drain hole, you run this direction. Running across the bay, swinging across this pit, and you must use the rope to swing across the pit. If you do not make it across the blue line, that's procedural. Then you run across to the other bay. Once you get within the blue fault line areas, that's when you can draw and load your pistol. Once you've drawn and loaded your pistol, you can then engage the single round plates with one hit each, and the square targets with two hits each. Moving through the structure area, until you get to these ports, and from the ports, from port one, engage four of the plates on that spinning plate rack, engage the remaining four plates from this port here.
So this is the one where you jump on the table and all that stuff. So how'd that go? Uh, I was slow getting off the table on that plank. Yeah, because if you touch the ground when you're getting off the table from that plank, that was a procedural. Also, you start to realize your mobility limitations wearing all this stuff too. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm done wearing this today. <laughs> I mean, we got two more of this and rank, I'm like, I'm just sitting in chairs and like leaning my armor against stuff just to get it off my back. Well, like on the stage, I went to sit down to um, get my feet on the plank. Oh, yeah. And as I did that, my gear kind of came up and hit me in the throat. I've had that too. So that was, uh, you know, something I just had to deal with there. Um, I'm getting tired of these sideways ports. Yeah, this this match seems to be the sideways port port ports year. It's like how many of those we had now? Uh, this the third one? No, that's the second one. Second one, but, but there's there, more. Oh, I'm sure there are more. Yeah. And um, year of the sideways ports. And I used my offset red dot on this one. Or the, oh, or you the actually you actually used that? Yes, yeah, so it was easier than getting behind the eye, limited eye relief. Yeah. Um, uh, my muzzle brake destroyed the port though. It shredded the wood all around it, which, hey, the port deserved it. The port deserved, your muzzle brake is, is, is the definition of an offensive muzzle brake. Yes. Um, everything went okay for me. I mean, so you ran it at a raw time 110, but you decided to not swing on the rope. Yeah, I didn't want to further injure my knees or ankles. So this is, an issue, this is a situation in which you decided to just, the juice wasn't worth the squeeze? And sometimes this is good for anyone at any match. If there's something that's just one step above your pay grade, there are times where the better answer is to just not do it. Right. I mean, I'm 275 pounds. I'm wearing 50 pounds of gear. Just doing it in practice, like coming down on it, it felt rough. And I knew if I did that on the clock, it wasn't going to be good. So you've got some knee issues. And when you land on your knees and ankles with all that weight, that's a lot of damage. That, that can be a lot of damage. And you've got two more stages today and four more tomorrow to get through. Right. So 10 seconds was worth it. Yeah. So you're raw to... Your raw time was 110 something. My time with no percent, uh, no procedurals was 122. So that makes you a 120 to my 122. So this is one stage in which I was only two seconds behind you. Right. Let me say this to the audience. Like I don't know if you notice if you watch in range enough. I change guns constantly. I'm always shooting a different pistol, a different rifle. Sometimes a G41, sometimes a G43, sometimes an AK, sometimes a 13 pound AK, sometimes an 8 pound AK, sometimes an AR, sometimes a What Would Stoner Do rifle. And if you watched, when you watched our What Would Stoner Do rifle series, um, there was a consistent improvement of our skill set scores and times across the course because we were always using the same gun. This is now another AK. It's the same AK but modified greatly. And what I find is that I'm slower with everything, not because the gun's not capable, but because I don't trust myself with the gun. Like, I'm not getting the same feedback I would. Like, if I was shooting my what was Stoner G rifle, hits that I know were hits with this, I don't feel confident about, not the same way. And I'm kind of just, like, decelerating. And I'm going through this at this, like, autopilot speed. And for me to get faster with this gun, and this gun's capable, but to get faster, I need to use it consistently and not change guns all the time. Right. I mean, I used to do that when I was actively writing for Recoil Magazine. Oh, yeah. Free, you know, get a new gun. Like, sometimes that week, go shoot a match with it. Mm -hmm. You know, and the most I ever had any one of them was two to three months. Definition of in-range. Right? And, um... Yeah, you know, you're never as good when you're switching equipment like that. So that sounds like an excuse, and I'm not making an excuse. I'm saying it's interesting to use these guns, and it allows us to draw interesting conclusions, and I'm sure we'll have some at the end of this match. But the reality is, is like what this turns into for me is, just don't mess up. It's not like I can't, uh, I don't feel like I can go at my full-on speed because I just don't feel like I'm there. Right. And so I decelerate. And so far, for four stages today, no tragedy, nothing great. Everything's been just sort of autopilot. For me. I, I think the reason we were the closest on this one yeah. is everything was relatively close range. It you was. Yeah. You weren't dealing with different height over bore issues. You weren't getting used to how a particular gun handled through recoil as much. It was all pretty close range paper and close range steel. So this is more about how fast you move through the stage. It was. I think than um, how accurately you shot for the most part. I will say up to four stages, nothing's really been that physical. No. Not really. This has been more of a much more difficult shooting challenge. Not a lot of a physical challenge. No, that's typically what hard as hell has been. I guess we'll find out if there's more of that later. Stay tuned for stage five.